now batting the couch. What's up, everybody? And welcome to the couch. How we doing tonight? What's going on? We got a lot for you. Super excited with my guy Ryan Makowski, aka Stump, aka the Big Macau, aka Two Three Brews. Um, what you got for us today, Ben? Uh, well, myself, I got uh, you know we got to think local, drink local, but I got a little Firestone Propagator. Propagator, okay, a little Citra, a little Citra hazy. What about you, buddy? What do you got over there? I, I put this out in the live the other day, and, and I'm going to pull it out again. It's a repeater, but that's okay. Later on, we're going to have another one. But uh, right now, I've got the uh, Alpha Delic IPA again because it's, it's sexy. But here, cheers to you, bud. That was nice. That was nice. Why don't you tell our, our boy who hooked us up with some, some tunes, uh, give him a little love. That was fantastic. We really appreciate you, dude. We're gonna have, we have a sick new intro to the podcast. Thanks to my guy. Como Beats. Thank you, brother. Uh, he's on Twitter, Como Beats. Check it out. Sick Beats. There's a lot of good stuff. He's absolutely knocked it out of the park for us. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Ooh. Good See what I Strong wordplay. Strong wordplay, dude. Throwing up the. Oh! <laughs> yes, but uh, thank you, Como. We love you. Appreciate it, brother. Awesome. So, hey, so today we're going to run down some of the sports news highlights. Um, we have an interview that we're going to be jumping into with Reed Worthy. It's fantastic. We're going to talk about hey, this one, man. his box, his CrossFit box. That sounds weird when I say box, but CrossFit, uh, CrossFit gym, recovery, what he's doing now, how he's adapting to what's going on. Um, we'll be update you on the brewery impact. Like we told you, if you're listening to the lives, we're going to, we've got some good stuff on that from some of the local breweries, 8-Bit Brewing in Marietta. Yes. Uh, Beachwood and Huntington Beach, Long Beach area. Wow, um, a good one. Such a good one. Oh, fantastic. We're going to talk about Mount Rushmore, your Mount Rushmore sports. And how you can win some sick gifts. Ooh, sick gifts. Uh, a little fun fact today. We'll wrap it up the usual. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to go into the rundown. The rundown? Pickle! Oh! <laughs> Probably scared your wife just now, and it's going to be fantastic. I think I woke the kids up with that one. Oh, gosh. I really hope so. So we got some topics here on what's going on in the, in the sport world. And the first one is today. So we're recording. It's Saturday the 4th, April 4th. Um, but Trump had a call with all the commissioners, all the major commissioners. So Are you quarantined over there? Am I wedding? Are you quarantined over there? I'm quarantined. Are you quarantined? I'm so cool. Well, I think we're a shelter in place is the right phrase. I feel like I'm, I'm over this. I'm done. I need, I I need sunshine in my life, and I need to get outside. Well, we're in California. There's plenty of sunshine. Well, not coming up. Maybe lots of rain, but that's okay. Yeah, but I need to go outside the perimeter of my like front yard and my backyard. I would agree. I would agree. I don't like going to the store and feeling like I, I just left with COVID-19. It's just awful. It's just terrible. But anyways, on that note, Trump had a conference call today with 12 of the top sports. Um, Commissioners, you know, NFL, NBA, MLB. Um, and the big news, big news of the day is he plans or his hope, his hope. I don't know. I, I don't know where you take it. But by September, to have fans back in the seats, or I'm sorry, August, and NFL will not be suspended or delayed. It'll start in September. It kicked off as usual. So um, now given, let's, let's. It'll take time. Medical, medical experts have to approve this. But if anything, we've kind of talked about this. They're going to play in empty stadiums. They're going to have to. Um, yeah. Spring training is going to have to be in empty stadiums. The NBA is going to have to come back in empty stadiums. I it mean, is what it is. Yeah, and you're going to have to play some of these games in empty stadiums. It's just going to have to happen for this year. Like, if you want to watch sports, you're going to have to watch it from home sometimes. Um, but the good thing is the sports is hopefully coming back very soon. Which is We need sports back, man. I, I, there's, there's nothing worse than sitting here. You work, you work from home, or if you don't, or like for you, you get, you're teaching your kids from home, yes. and then you have nothing to you have nothing to throw on in the background, or nothing to check out on. You have nothing to escape. There's no escapism. Yes, I, awesome. I'm literally going from being a professional baseball player to being a teacher. Dude, you might actually be getting educated for the first time in your life. And let me tell you what, 
Teachers are underpaid. You oh, guys clearly. paint and thank you. Yeah, huge, huge shout out to them. That I couldn't do it. I'm not smart enough to do it, nor do I have the patience. <laughs> no patience. The patience. <laughs> I play baseball where you feel way more than you succeed, and I have zero patience when it comes to school. I'm with you on that one. So that's our first topic. Next one. Justin Turner had a fun take, and we talked about this a little yeah. bit. Please but let the people know about this. JT, yes. I, I love it. I think it's one of the best ideas, and I think it's a great idea even if they have a normal season moving forward because it's going to save arms. It's going to save – like it's a long season. It's grueling, and if you get stuck in a 15, 16, 17 yeah. inning, extra inning ball game and you got to catch a flight out of town the next night, that night, that's just terrible. But let me tell you what it is. I think well, let, let me tell you, that for, for the fans at home – Go play catch with your son and throw the ball as hard as you can, 40 throws. And then wake up the next day and do the same thing and tell me how your arm feels. Well, that's terrible. I already know that's terrible. Yes. And that's what these extended 17 games, when everybody's throwing all these innings, and then everybody's going to have to come back and pitch the next night. If you're playing double headers, two yeah. seven, you know, 14 innings right there. Um, well, let's educate the people. So JT – um, was on, I think it was, you know, Fox Net LA or whatever, whatever the Dodger network is. Um, basically well, saying, hey. How do you don't know this? I don't know. I just turn it off. Look, it's the, Dodger, like the Dodgers. Uh, everybody has it now. Everybody has it. They just, they just, uh, AT&T, DirecTV, they all got it now. But anyways, regardless, um, he's saying, look, if, if you're tied after nine, you're going to the 10th, you're still tied. Instead of going to the 11th, playing extra innings, going on from there. Three best hitters from each team. They each get five outs. Whoever hits the most dingers wins. Great fan experience. Save arms. I mean, it's a win-win. Yeah, and we're talking about hitting homers. Clearly, dingers. everybody wants to see dingers. And if you can make a home run derby every week somewhere, I mean, there's a lot of extra inning games. Whether it goes a ton, you know, twelve to sixteen innings. I mean, we could be seeing a home run derby. Now, my thing is, if you continue that, does that take away from the home run derby at the All-Star break? Because there is so much home run derby being played throughout the season. Is the home run derby not as cool? I don't know what that does. And I think, I think an interesting thing is you'd have to look at how many, how many games and when you go into extra innings aren't one in the 10th. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of times where someone gets up in the, in the top of the 10th, the bottom of the 10th, Yahtzee, Somebody comes in, closes out, game over. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I'd still happily watch the Madrid because you're not going to see you're not going to see the top guys. You're not going to see Bryce Harper every week in in an extra inning ball game. You're going to get you know who you're going to get if it was I mean all the Dodgers. So, so what do we but. what do we go with? Whoever's coming up in the lineup as a home run derby? Who says you get hit, or do we just? I think, I think you got to pick your best three. You got to pick your best three. No, I think it should be where that that inning left off. What would we come up hit next? I don't care. It could be your seven eight nine. That's that's. But if you got a pitcher in the National League, though, huh? You, could, you got a pitcher in the National League. I mean, you, you can you can you can substitute. You can take someone off the bench. Your, and your pinch hitter come in. Okay, fair. Do that spot, but it's it's. I mean, it makes it more realistic to a game where this is the lineup that's coming up. I actually like that. I actually like that because you have pitching matchups where this guy. I mean, he's the ace facing number four this day, like. I mean, we obviously know the ace has a better chance of winning that game. So why if you think about it, too, if you're in the lower part of your lineup, your top half has probably seen more, had more bats, had more chances to, to actually execute. And if that's the court, I mean, there's, there's so many variables. There's so many options. There's so many things you can do with it. But I love the idea, JP. Great idea. I love it. Yes. I love it. We need more of that. We need more of this change, not changing the game, but a better experience. Changing the game, changing the game. It's not changing the game. The game's still the same way. You yeah. pitch the ball from sixty feet. You hit it. You run to nine. You run ninety feet. That, that, that hasn't changed. Are we going? Uh, what, what is it? What do we call it? The uh, XLB. Oh, that you know. Extreme League Baseball. Actually, when you send me that, I actually would be okay with that. That'd be yeah, that'd be right. fun to watch. But we gotta have Vince McMahon has to run it. Yeah, I think if you get hit by a pitcher and you don't charge the mound, you get suspended. Ooh. Do you like that? I mean, there's so many things you could do with baseball because a pitcher is holding the ball and he can throw it wherever he wants. But watch out, pitchers! If you're playing in the XLB, the hitter might go to the bat. <laughs> that, just, that, that escalated quickly. That escalated quickly. 
on that XLB note, that does lead us into our next topic, which is the WWE WrestleMania was set to be this weekend. It was set to be this weekend. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of concern. Um, Raymond James Stadium in, what are they? They're in Tampa, right? Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, um, but we did find out it's still happening. It's not happening at Raymond James Stadium. It's going to happen at a WWE Performance Center. I don't know where it was. Gronk is still Gronk? hosting. Gronk is still the host. Um, I don't know. I don't know about you, man. I was a, I watched way too much wrestling when I was younger. The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you've got your Steve Austin. I mean, I, you know, you want to go back, you know, the, the whole Colgans, the Ultimate Warrior. Well, clearly, Kenny Savage. You know, I mean, is that Ric Flair? Ric Flair. Woo! <laughs> Woo! He had it, dude. He's still like wrestling. If you didn't watch wrestling when you were a kid, you weren't wrestling. out. You weren't wrestling in the front yard. You weren't getting after it. Um, so much, so much but, wrestling in the front yard, oh, dude. So much. Like I'm like coming off the top rope, ah! you know. But wrestling, dude. That that. What a cool sport. Like not even like just because. It's wrestling. I mean, we all know it's fake, but it's a the way, show. The way they put on a show, and that's what it's about—the show, and that's what people want to see—is the show. I think it's great, man. There's, you know, I'm not watching it right now. It would be, it'd just be something different. It's, it's that escapism, that getaway, that you just, you just get out of the normal day and you get to enjoy just some just big dudes just going to. This does sound wrong, but just slamming bodies, dude. Yeah, they're slamming bodies. Ooh, slamming bodies. Roping, elbow throwing. Oh. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this next topic, but the ECHL. Um, it's basically like it's it's a mid level um, mid level hockey. hockey it's minor league hockey. Yeah, it's a yeah. League it's like minor league hockey. It's like a double. It's equivalent to a double A basically for the, for the bigs. Um, but they're auctioning off. Game years jerseys from uh, it was a, like a the blackout night or whatever they called it. Um, so it's just it's just funny to see not funny but it's cool to see these ways that um, leagues, organizations, even players. I mean, we've seen MLB players donating you know hundred thousand dollars here and there to, to to pay people that aren't working at the stadium. But but this is the pay the players the, league, the, the players that are struggling because I mean I think they make five to six hundred bucks a week. Yeah, you know veterans are making maybe a thousand. I mean that's top like. A thousand, maybe top guys max. Yeah, that's a max salary. This is a good way for the the teams or the league, you know, and the fans to kind of help these guys support these guys so that they are able to come back and play when it's time. You know, one hundred percent. Some guys are probably trying to look at getting a job now, whatever's available. You know, to you got to feed your family, family, dude. I would. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Um, so this is, I, I like it. It's a cool, cool idea. Maybe. More minor league teams can do that to maybe help out their players or their staff. That their is, staff. That's a big game. one. Because season started, right? For minor league season, it starts on the ninth. That's when we were supposed to open up. But uh, the people that were expecting to sell beer or concessions, you know, maybe we auction off older jerseys or, or game used bats or whatever to help these people that were supposed to be working that can't yeah. work right now um, be able to, to pay their bills and, and do what they need. 100%. I, I think you know it. It's just, yeah, I think outside of the box right now because there's a lot of people who, I mean, they're not working and they still got bills to pay. Yeah, that's, that's the crazy thing. Man. It, it's, life doesn't stop no matter what. No, no, it keeps going. Um, and this, was, this isn't really much, we don't, I don't know, we need to spend a ton of time on it, but I thought it was a, a fun number to see. So there's an estimate that between NHL, NBA, um, and the MLB, just this this halt, this delay, whatever you want to call it, it's what, the like season. Last month, we'd say. Let's say yeah, it's only been three weeks right now, right? Three yeah. weeks essentially. Um, but they're going to lose an estimated of one B billion dollars per industry, or is that as a whole across across the across the three okay. um, the three leagues? Okay. Still, I mean, even if you look at it, that's a that's an insane number. It's a lot of money. Yeah, and. We know that sports needs the money to keep going. We got to pick the big <laughs> guys, and we got to pick the big guys, right? Because that's who everybody comes to see. You know, I just think about all the money that's not being spent at a game. 
Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I saw, I saw back to the Trump topic as he's talking about them. Um, these leagues, these commissioners need to lobby for tax credits for, um, you know, concession or not uh, like ticket sales or concessions or whatever to be like tax credits. So it incentivizes people to go back to the games, to get out, to go back into the, um, you know, spending money when this is all over. Yeah, man. They, everybody's got to spend, I and mean, we got to get everybody out of the rut, right? That's what we talk about a lot about the small businesses, uh, giving back to our local community and doing whatever we can to, to help these. And, and that goes for these big sports teams too. Like, yeah, they're going to have to spend the money and they're going to have to have help and get people in the stadiums at some point. And hopefully everybody can sell out as fast as possible. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's a perfect segue into our, our first numero uno. Numero, this is, this is, this is historic. This is monumental. This is historic. Yeah. So our first guest, uh, it is. It's a local, and that's why we went with the Think Local, Drink Local tab for our first episode. We're going to talk about breweries after this, but sit tight because we got a great interview coming to you. Um, we're going to talk with Reed Worthington, who is the owner. He's a CrossFit owner of, of um, CrossFit Lumberyard here in Anaheim, California. Regional athlete, former athlete, just an absolute, first of all, great human being. Human but being. More importantly, more importantly, just an absolute specimen. Yes. We call him an athlete. We call him the unicorn. The unicorn. It's beautiful. And you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So sit tight. We got this for you. And don't go anywhere because we got more. We got the brewery update and more to hit you with. But hang tight. Here it comes. On the couch. The couch is sponsored by Blessed Lifestyle, a faith-based clothing brand brought to you for every lifestyle so go check them out at blessedlifestyleco.com. You are joining us. We've got Reed Worthington, just a phenomenal athlete. We're talking here. We're talking a former NAU linebacker. We are talking a CrossFit Games athlete. We are talking a CrossFit box owner. We are talking. What else have you done? Just a guy. He's just a dude, man. He's just a dude living his life, Small brother. Business owner. <laughs> Small business owner. That's right. That's Small big... business owner. That's the big ticker right there, man. That's the. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I first got introduced to Reed uh, through the gym I work out at here in Anaheim called the Office. Um, Reed was running his startup. At that time, right? Just kind of renting out some space. Yeah, about 1,200 square feet. We had a little uh, corner, you know, that these guys, uh, that they let us use and paid them for it. And that's where we all started off. Yeah, so I was in there hitting one day, working out, whatever. I think Reed saw a lot of fun to be had when he saw me. So oh, yeah. I think he had, he had his... Uh, his partner at that time was Blake, and he had Blake come over and talk to us, ask if we want to work out. And uh, me, I'm like, yeah, sure. What, you know, I want to see yeah. what this CrossFit thing's about. I'm going to get jacked. That's right. I'm going to get lumberjacked. And, lumberjack. Uh, speaking of, I brought it for the guy. C yeah, dude. CrossFit Lumberyard for those. Dude, that's, a, that's my, that, my swag. That's a 2015, 2016 vintage gear right there, man. <laughs> That's when the legs were getting swole. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Reed, Reed ran me through my first workout, and I I think I puked that day, right? Just in the corner of the cage? You puked a few times, yeah. That was, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, yeah. Bro, he cleaned up my puke. I did. What? Yeah. I kind of felt bad. Be, that's the coach you want. The one that makes you puke and will clean it up, because he, he, he knew he made you puke. Yeah, we're a full service operation, you know, from head to toe. We just, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. And that's why we have him on the show today because he is what I call a unicorn of the workout industry. I appreciate that. He everything. He's special. He's magically just a great guy. And uh, we're excited to have you, Reed Worthington. Well, thank you for having me on the couch, guys. Yes. Of course. First off, we didn't know. What you brought with you today? What are you drinking? Oh yeah, what are you drinking, buddy? 
Yeah, brought to the couch in the Lesion Space Dust IPA. Classic. Tried and true right there. Tried and true. That thing's been around forever. Yeah, Space Dust one of my favorite. I'm going to pop it right here. Is that all right? Oh, pop please it. do. Please. Pop yeah, team, team pop. Three, two, one, pop. Mine's already popped. Sorry. Sorry. Pop, pop. He's a yep. glass drinker. He's got to drink it out of glass. I'm snooty. That's how I do. You want to do the pink That's pretty snooty. Yeah, so Legion, I've, I've always introduced to Legion probably a couple years back and not really a big beer drinker, to be honest. Um, you know, I don't mess around with like Coors Light or Bud Light or any of that stuff. But if I'm going to buy a beer, it's it's probably going to be an Legion Space Dust. I was actually looking for the uh, Tangerine Express. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, that's a good one from Stone is also one of my, it's probably my, my top two or the Stone Ripper. IPA, also a good one from um, Stone, but Elysian, you know, tried and true from Seattle. Got some family up in Seattle, so nice. I've actually been to two of their breweries uh, oh, up sweet. there. Yeah, I took my wife up there back in, I think it was actually for our first anniversary. We went up to Seattle to visit my grandma, and we stopped into two of the Elysian uh, little breweries, so that was cool. Seattle's yeah. nice. City. Love Seattle. Or because yeah. it gets, you know, with all the rain and clouds and stuff, it's I love it, man. I, the, the seafood there is cool. So good. Yeah, Seattle is one of my favorite cities by far. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a great place. I got nothing. Never been. Never been. Well, we gotta go. We're gonna take a road trip. Road trip. Uh, not, not right now, but eventually. Yeah, hey, I, that's a great road trip for you. <laughs> <laughs> we can do a road trip. Nah. Hard pass. We're gonna take the couch on a road trip. Dude, yeah. That'd be sick. That'd be great. That'd be sick. I like that. Yeah. So, Reed, tell us, why why the Lumberyard? How'd you start it? How'd you get there? Walk us through that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I was working for a gym. I was playing football overseas in Germany. I came home, got introduced to CrossFit. It really wasn't about it, to be honest. I quit my first workout. <laughs> um, but... Oh yeah, absolutely. They had me do burpees, and I was like, yeah, right, I'm out. <laughs> like, you guys are no hard hard no hard no there <laughs> uh but the gym owner at the time he's like no man like just you know keep coming like you know just bring a case of water for us and and you can work out here and i was like all right cool so um because i was broke back then and still broke but you know <laughs> figuratively <laughs> speaking whatever <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah so then I started, he had me do a competition about three weeks later. I ended up winning the competition and that was kind of fun. So I was out of football then and uh, yeah, just started getting into CrossFit and believing I would still pick and choose my workouts back then. That was 2012. Uh, worked for that gym for a while and then kind of got the opportunity to open up my own gym in uh, 2014. And yeah, I, I kind of, you know, the lumber kind of came to me. I went to NAU. We we're the lumberjacks, but that really didn't like play a huge role on picking a name. I think it was because I grew up with my dad who did construction. Yeah. And I was always in Home Depot or, you know, Ganal Lumber and I just loved it. And, you know, the rustic wood. And I, I tell my wife, like, you know, if I ever get out of a job, the first place I'm going to apply is Home Depot. Like, because I could, I could talk you backwards up and down the lumber aisle and be fine. <laughs> I mean, um, so a backyard patio out here. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did build your backyard patio. So that's gonna, and, and I, I love like the blue collar atmosphere. So the more it, it kind of evolved into this name, it's a, it's a place where people come with a blue collar attitude to get things done. Uh, it's not frou-frou and frilly and, you know, sexy all the time. You can say it's more of just, Hey, we're going to show up for an hour. We're going to get some hard work done. And, uh, that's kind of what the lumber yard means. So. And it literally started as that. It's just come, show up, we're going to get a workout in. There was, I mean, I've worked out at the old place. There was nothing. Um, no, nothing. It started yeah. where you are today. It's, it's amazing. But my question to you is, do you have to have scruff because it's the lumber yard? Are you, are, do we need that Ooh. beer? Bonus point, maybe. capable of being the, the master of the, the, the lumber yard? Yeah, you know, I keep the beard around. Uh, I used to have the big beard. You know, the the big growth beard. Uh, I go through phases. You can always tell what type of mood I'm in by how short my beard is. Because if I'm in, like, a good place and whatever, I'm going to let it grow out a little bit. So, like, right now I'm in a pretty good place. Like, I got some cheek patch going on. Uh, 
that someone was joking on the other day. I thought like, yo, when we get out of this thing and you know, we're able to open the gym back again, you'll probably have a shaved head, huh? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it might happen. If you did, I don't know if the wife's gonna go for that, man. No, but a beard is definitely a prerequisite. I think all my guys now are trying to grow just a little bit of stubble. Um, you know, I always tell people that my you know, my boss is a jerk and you know, every once in a while he makes me shave. So, you know, I try to relate <laughs> to some people as first responders and stuff. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's strong. So what do you what are you doing now? I mean, obviously in California we're shelter in place. So I mean, talk us through yeah. how you're supporting your team right now and your members. Yeah, so we've been uh, shut down for about, well, since March 17th, our six-year anniversary. So it's about Ooh. two two weeks, what, that's about 17 days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've really just hit the ground running and put forth online platforms. We're offering free online uh, platform to anyone uh, so you can access our workouts. And we have a body weight option. We have a width weight option. I rented out, not rented out, pretty much loaned out or gave out. Um, 90% of the equipment within the gym <laughs> to people. At my house. Some of us at my house. Like, yeah. I, I yeah. You know, I, I needed it. I, the I, fact that you took that bike is impressive. That's, yeah. You know. That is a pain cave. Right the there. worst thing ever, but my <clears throat> legs need it. Like if, if I'm not gonna be able to lift heavy weight, like that thing will blow your legs up. Yeah. So we just, uh, we just started zoom classes this past week. So we're one, we're one week in with live zoom classes uh, we're doing t two a day right now, and those are going pretty well. I think there's a definitely a divide, and you know, you kind of feel like a P90X instructor sometimes because you're just like working out into a screen and <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. But you know, you know, there is a good there is a good place for that, and we're just trying to maintain communication with our, our clientele, our athletes, and you know, just trying to get this like through it together. It's it's not easy for anyone. And if anyone says that they're having a great time, it's like, mm, probably not because, you, you know, it's just it's a new normal, right? So we're all adjusting. Yeah. We're all trying to create this kind of sense of this is a new normal and we got to be okay with it and we got to make the best of it. So I think those that uh, learn and also adapt through those times are going to be able to thrive, obviously, when we get back up and running full head of steam again. So, yeah, for sure. I know how, how big your community is, right? How, how, you guys put a lot of emphasis on your community and I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, just from, you know, being at the gym and then my wife being a part of the gym for a long time and just seeing how well the community responds, everything, the support you guys have from the community is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so what are you and the wife doing these days to actually stay fit? I feel like you, you live in that gym, right? So what's, what's that look like? Yeah. So she's working from home now and to be honest, I'm, trying to maintain a regular schedule. So I'm doing uh, two or three, 5 a.m. classes a day. And I'm actually doing those at the gym. So I'm getting up Sweet. at four. I'm going to the gym by myself. I'm hooking up the computer and doing it. And I'll stay there until 11, 12, one o'clock, um, you know, writing emails, uh, you know, programming, communicating with people and just trying to kind of learn the whole digital world. So. Uh, you know, I, I'll come home in the middle of the day, or the afternoon, and then we'll go for a nice little long walk, two or three mile walk. Uh, she's pregnant right now, so right. you know, we I just just to spend time with her. So, because she's working all the time here, and I don't want to get in her way, I kind of just go to the gym, I lock the doors, I kind of do my own thing and quiet, and throw on some music or a podcast, and so yeah, it's good. It's still good. good <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. <clears throat> yeah, a little escape time. For me, the big thing I want to talk to you about is because we brought this up a long time ago. It was probably three years ago, maybe. Um, beer is a recovery drink? Can be. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, uh, you hit some, some big legs one day and you have one beer, you have some carbs. Um, it's definitely going to help you. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably going to get kicked around for saying this. Uh, yeah, it's going to help you recover. Um, to a certain extent now i'm not going overload with anything but there actually have been a uh, scientific kind of proof that beer can be used to help aid recovery yeah i, I the big thing i heard is it reduces soreness after a workout that was that was the big fact that i've, I've kind of looked up and saw that, that a lot of people are using it to 
to get rid of the soreness? Well, I think we all know that it kind of increases inflammation, right? So that could entail reduced soreness by having more, you know, available recovery micronutrients around certain muscle groups to help you recover. I mean, I'm not a scientist. I'm not, I don't know the specifics of all that and I'm not going to claim to do it, but I'm just thinking kind of anatomy physiology off the top of my head, but yeah, I'm going to go for that. That's good. I'm all about it. I've actually done it with you. Um, we had a yeah. workout one day. I think it was we did. Hey, I was like, end of the week. I worked hard. We popped a beer. Yeah. The workout. I wasn't sore. I felt amazing. I, you know, I I see it as a recovery drink. I love it. Um, but we're talking like one, no, <laughs> two after after a, a workout. Yeah, we're not talking anything more than really sixteen ounces. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, let's, yeah. let's, let's get real. So, so this space dust, I don't know what it's a 16 ounce or yeah, one of these, but you know, who can stop at once? So, you know, might as well just throw down a couple extra. Yeah. Pop some bruisers with the boys and here we are. I mean, if, if you have three or four of them, you're not going to be sore at all. No, you're not going to be sore at all, okay. but you're not going to be working out the next day either. Drink <laughs> <laughs> water. Drink some water. Yeah. And we've grown <laughs> under 21 age drinking, so be 20. Yeah, of age. Please, please. Don't get blitzed. It's for what? Oh, yeah. That's for, no. yeah, you don't want that. No. Yes. So, yeah. Beautiful. What do you got for him, Stump? Well, I was actually going to say we got our, we got our fire, little fire round. I don't, I don't know what we're going to call it, so I think we can kind of let Reed decide what, what may be. So, you want to explain to him what you're going with here? So, I'm going with a round of five questions that you have to answer off the top of your head as quickly as possible. Got it. We want you to come up with the name mm. Fast Five. We're not going to call it Fast Five because I think other people call it Fast Five. We need something. Uh, Fast Five, we can go, you know, the Fire Fingers. We can go. <laughs> fire right. Fingers. You know, Fire That's Fingers and done. Fire. No, what do, we, what do we got here? Fire fingers in five seconds, you know, the, uh, the fire the, five, the fire five. Ooh. Hot off the press. Yeah. Fire five. Fire. Five or five. You go the fire. The fire five under five. Fire five, Ooh. five seconds. Well, you get under five seconds per question. question. Okay. Yeah. I like the complexity there. That's nice. Yeah. Do I get fire. If you're uh, above five seconds. Yeah. Blush I me. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for you to find Here, right. fire, fire five. Fire five and five. First time. What was your first car? Uh, Chevy Suburban. Ooh. You got toilet paper or hand sanitizer? Hand sanitizer. You got showers. <laughs> Favorite chick flick. <laughs> what was that? Favorite chick flick. Oh, I don't. I've had Chick Fil A one time. No. Chick flick. Oh, chick flick. Chick. Oh, chick flick. Oh, gosh. Come on. Uh, mm, top Gun. I don't know. Chick flick. Top Gun. <laughs> 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 And then I want to know, uh, jacked or shredded? Do you want to be jacked or do you want to be shredded? I want to be jacked. Jacked, love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then if you can't get tan, if you can't get tan, get jacked. That's my, my motto. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Last one, number five. That was fantastic. What do you sing yeah. in the shower? What do I sing in the shower? Uh, wake me up before you go go. Wake me up before you yes. Go. Some wham. Yes. That is why you are. Wake me up before you go go. Yeah, it's a good one, huh? Dude, I am so texting your wife for some an audio clip or a video of that. Jitterbug. Oh, we're gonna get. It. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Read. Thank you, dude. So much. That is fantastic. Thank you. Any parting words, Sir Reed? Anything you want to share? Um, how can we look? I guess this is a better question, actually. Kind of a weird situation for everyone that's part of a CrossFit community or whatever, a local gym. 
what's the best way that we can support you or they can support you if they're in the local community right now? Yeah, if you're local, I mean, we're talking regional or, you know, worldwide, really. We're offering free, free programming right now. You can find that in our bios on uh, CrossFit Lumberyard and Lumberjack Athletics. So we just want to get the word out there and help people kind of work through their mental state while they're at home. So we understand that a lot of people are going through a lot of different things and exercise releases endorphins to, you know, aid as far as, you know, people's moods. So that's why we're not charging for anything right now. We're not hoarding everything to ourselves. We're absolutely just giving away everything for free. You know, we got warm ups on there. We got body weight options. We got with weight options. We got demo videos. Um, yeah, so we're just we're just trying to help out uh, um, best way we can. So, love it. We love, love it. it. That's what we love about your community, man. Um, anyway, that anybody, I know you guys did a T-shirt to raise uh, some money. You got anything uh, coming up? Yeah, man, we're dropping some lumberjack at at home uh, apparel. You know, we got a few different uh, merch options, some women's muscle tanks, and so forth. So those will be also available on the links in our bio on instagram and then also our website crossforlumberyard.com so uh they can head on over there and check those out We've got some pretty sweet artwork coming out very retro like things so it's fun yeah it's awesome man it's fun i mean that shirt b's got is fantastic too oh dude that's the classic people that's ask for classic. it all the time it's it's such a great shirt right there yeah I'm so mad i didn't wear mine now I'm so mad yeah I mean, you're talking to a legend right now sea fly legend that's right. I mean, the Barnyard Invitational, like you won it two years in a row or something. <laughs> Undefeated, dog. Undefeated in a ring. Settle down. But, uh, yes, Reed Worthington, thank you, brother. We love you. We appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Hey, the, hey, the couch, boys. Thanks for having me. And uh, best of luck. And we'll uh, be following you guys. And, you know, we'll see you soon. Cheers, brother. Absolutely, brother. Cheers, man. Cheers, dude. Chug it. We'll be right back, but if you're trying to learn more about beer, go to at 23 Brews on Instagram. Some of the best knowledge there is about brew. Go check them out. What's up? We're back, and we've got a brewery update, and I'm going to let my guy, the stump, a.k.a. 23 Brews, bring us home with the brewery update. Yeah, so, I mean, given all the craziness going on, I've, I've, I've tried to stay in contact with a bunch of the local breweries, and um, yeah. The two that, that I spent a ton of time with, Avid Brewing, and um, a couple of people affected over at Beachwood Brewing. I mean, it's it's been a, it's been a massive shift, right? I mean, you can't go into the you can't go into the tasting room and drink beer anymore. You're not walking into That's the hangout, right? No, yeah. I mean, think about it. You know, you think about like what like what Brewery X right down the street from us, Bottle Logic, right? Both of those places packed. Huge indoors, they're packed. I mean, you're you're hanging out with your friends in the weekends. If you want to stop by, grab a beer, you know, after your your shift. Yep. Um, that's where everybody goes. If you want to, you know, I feel like these these breweries that are coming around. Uh, would you call them micro breweries? Um, or, the crap breweries for the most part. Yeah. So that's I see majority of like hangouts. These people are going to drink these people's beer and hang out with a group of people, and it, I think it's awesome because i've i've done it myself i enjoy it right they've got food cards so they have some kind of food um, i bring my kids sometimes i just you know that brewery x down the street they can go run around yeah. so i think it's it's a way that we got to find a way to help back these help help yeah and i think you nailed on that and that was the whole reason i, I reached out to them and and i think what i love about it is they're just gracious that people want to help and they're just gracious that people are still buying beer, still showing up. I mean, a ton of these people were laid off for, I mean, if you're not coming to the tasting room, they don't need you to serve beer, you know? So production's down, you know, traffic's down. They're not making as much beer. Um, the big thing that I took away from it and what's really cool is, um, you know, the head brewer down at uh, 8 Brewing in Marietta, his name's Dan. Um, they, they make great food. If you haven't been there, when this all settles down, and you're in Southern California, you need to go to Ape Brewing. Ape. Phenomenal beer. I'm good. Yeah, it, 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 great beer, phenomenal food, cool spot. <clears throat> and just a great, it's like a, they, they model all their beers after games. So they have like Super Mario Tart and um, Call of Broody, those types. Of, and, and it's good beer. So. I need to call it Broody. Yeah, you. so it's good stuff. But since they have a ton of food, they're using their meat distribution lines, um, their produce lines, everywhere where they get their food to kind of sell essentials to locals there. So they're selling meat, rice, beans. Um, I mean, you name it, 
they're giving back burger patties. The, the, it's endless. That's awesome. On top of that, they're still selling their beer to go and those types of things, which you've seen across the state, right? Everybody's for the most part selling beer to go. You can get whatever you want filled. Well, aren't a lot um, of people just trying to ship now as well? Yeah, I, I, I don't know how many, but I've seen a lot of them shipping within California now. So if you're in California and you've got a brewery that you like beer from, look them up. They might be shipping beer. Hopefully they can ship it to you. Green, uh, dude, some of them are even delivering. So if you're local, within like 10 or 15 miles, some are delivering beer. Like Beachwood Brewing, I believe, is one that delivers at certain hours of the day. Um, I mean, just really cool stuff. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, I mean, these breweries came to a screeching halt. Yeah. Like they were packed. They were packed before all this. Every day. Every day. Everywhere you went, full. I mean, even Brewery Rex, with how new they are and how massive they are, that place is packed. It's insane how full that I mean, large spot gets. Saturdays there are, it's a party. I mean, sometimes they have musicians playing, you know, on the stage and they've got this kid area, they got a taco truck or, you know, it's just, it's awful. It's a big party for a bunch of people to go out and have fun and drink some beer. Exactly. I guess that. Yeah, I need it. I need it in my life. <laughs> you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's, you'd be silly not to recognize that, that some of these breweries aren't going to open their doors again. Some of them are, you know, the smaller ones, yeah. they're going to get hit hard by this. But I mean, the promising note that I got from everybody that I talked to, and I talked to three or four of them is, you know, they suggested there's been just a massive outpouring of support from the locals, buying beer, buying essentials, whatever they're doing. I mean, you got one there. Um, and they just appreciate that. So I asked them, like, what can we do? How can we help? What do we need to do? And, you know, just like kind of Reed said, I mean, if you have – they know everyone's hit. That's the big thing. We all know a lot has changed over the last few weeks. But if you have the ability to, if you are looking for beer, you know, what are your local Coors, Coors Light's going to be fine. Miller Light's going to be fine. They're all going to be fine. Yeah. Anheuser's going to be fine. These guys They're are going to live. live. Don't worry about it. Help exactly. Small, the small business owners, get out there, buy your local brew. Come, watch the show, have a drink with us, or two. Yeah, exactly. Or three. Maybe three if you're really feeling saucy. You know, that's a lot, actually. In the I mean, time I think that we might need to get Reed to do some some lumberjack brew. Ooh. The lumber brew. Or the jacked brew. We, I mean, he he can do it. If there's a guy that can do it, the unicorn. Well, he has the beard. He has the beard to do it. That's like a prerequisite to brewing. Yeah. The unicorn... <laughs> Unicorn of CrossFit can start to figure it out. Company, if he wants, one hundred percent. Hey, you brew, you 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 work out in the morning. You brew beer by night. Done, and you use it as a recovery drink. Boom! Ooh, look at you just went full circle there. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. Full of life, bud. Sport <laughs> and beer. That's what we do. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, I think the whole thing, you know, our whole motto is, that, you know. Think local, drink local, support your small businesses, support your, lo support your local breweries, you know, help them out if you can, however you can, go show your support yes. um, to, to them, to them. That's the big, the big That's takeaway. We're here, right? We're all supporting each other. We're getting it done and we're going to get through this. 100%. Um, so that, that's all I got on the breweries. Do you want to take the Mount Rushmore? No. Do, you, do you remember how many people are on Mount Rushmore? There are... We went through this last week. We went. We got four on Mount Rushmore. Nice. Proud of you. Proud of you, dude. I'm a jock. Sorry, but I know beer. I know sports. <laughs> so Mount Rushmore. Who's on Mount Rushmore? Dude, I have no idea. Who's on your favorite athletes from MLB, NHL, NBA, NFL. PGA, dude. Throw the PGA in there. Come on. Sure. I, we all know everybody wants Tiger in there. We know. So we'll, That's we'll, a good we'll, point. Um, what else do you want to throw in? You want to throw any other sports in there? I mean, they can pick whoever they want, but they got to know where we we're coming we from because they got to match our Mount Rushmore. Cricket. We can go soccer, MLS. We can go Premier League. But name of the game. What's the name of the game? Did we come up with a name? Mount Rushmore. I don't know. We didn't really come up with a name. So we're going to have to call it Mount Rushmore. Who is your Mount Ooh. Rushmore of sports? And if you can match, a.k.a. Stump, with the Barnyard, we're going to send you a nice gift. So we're going to come up with our 
Mount Rushmore of the top four greatest players of all time in those sports. And here's a hint. It's probably going to be the MLB, NFL, NBA, the, kind of in that ballpark. Maybe some soccer in there. There might be a, um, a twist, though. I've got a twist. You definitely do. You always have a twist. I've spent some time abroad in Australia playing some different sports. Ooh, okay. Okay. So can you stay with me? But you got to match our four. So we're going to come with our combined four, Mount Rushmore. you got to match it. You do. You're going to win some the couch swag. Yes. Um, but look, send those in. We'll give you, we'll give you, I don't want to say till next Saturday. I think that's aggressive. What do you think? Maybe by the, dude, let's go tax day. Even though it's not tax day by April 15th. will be the last one. My tax and then we were, I'm done. So, so are mine. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not how it works. You know, that's not how it works. They extended it anyways. Yeah, but do. by April 15th, submit them to us, DM us, However you want to get them to us. I don't really know how else you would, but DM us what, what your Mount Rushmore is. And um, that following weekend when we do our podcast, we'll reveal if there's a winner and our four. And even if there's multiple winners, we will send you oh, all. Oh, yeah. All again. If there's multiple winners, man, Mazel Tov. I will, I will, I will, yes. I will virtual fist bump you because that's, I that's impressive. Virtual. Oh yeah, we're supposed to probably do that. The elbow, the elbow is probably more, you know, social distancing friendly. Yes, but that's that's our game. We're sticking to it. <laughs> we need you. Send your DM, send your messages to us, so we can get you some cool gifts. Yeah, feedback. What you guys want here? What you like? What you don't like? Questions? Look, shoot them to us. We're all about. We want to connect with you guys. We want to know more. We want to know what you want. This yes. isn't for us to, I mean, we're wrong. We like to sit here on the couch and, True. well, I'm not even on the couch right now, but eventually. <laughs> That's a good Eventually. Question. Is it just beer or do, or, or do you guys want to see some whiskey? Do you want to see some bourbon? Do you, do you want some wine? you want a wine night? I think we get super snooty with wine one night. Let us know. Do you think that we need to know? And I think coming up, our, we've got a guest coming up that is, special because it's he's he's not in the states it's gonna be wild it's gonna be all over the place um he's one of a kind and that's what we're trying to bring here is one of a kind people that are good human beings great athletes love blues and we have a a great one for you tonight you guys need to, oh you guys need to come on and watch it's this. gonna be good epic. It's, gonna be oh, really epic. Good. Epic. it's gonna be epic <laughs> There's a good chance this is gonna it's gonna be next level, that's for sure. Yes. So it takes us into our this day in sports, which again it's gonna be a little work because it's April fourth. And I know not everyone's gonna listen to this on April fourth. We're not even gonna dump it out on April fourth because it's almost ten o'clock here in Southern California. Oh, okay. April fourth is Wait, what? This day, April fourth. So you wanna know what happened this day? What happened this day? We had a couple things, and I'm going to lead off with my favorite. This day back in 2014, and I'm sorry, I can't look at y'all because i got to read this because it's just a lot. Charlie Blackman ties a team record by Andres Calarraga back in 95, but he collected six hits in the Rockies' 12-2 win over Arizona, the team's home opener at Coors Field. Um, the only thing, and I, I'll let you take this one, the only thing that was disappointing about that is what? He got six hits and didn't hit for the cycle. How do you do that, Chuck Nasty? How do you do that? With the beard magic and all, how do you do that? <laughs> Three doubles, two singles, and one dinger. We know he – Chuck Nasty can hit some dingers. We all know that. I mean, he might be one of the most special leadoff hitters in the game right now. Whether he hits leadoff one of a kind. here or somewhere down the line of – I mean – they're, they've been talking about moving him down the lineup to get more power towards the bottom or the middle of the lineup. Yeah, the top half. Yeah, I mean, he could get anywhere in the line. You know that. Come on. I mean, we get it. Chuck's, you know, we're all getting older. Time, father time stops for nobody. Um, and the stolen bases aren't there. But the guy rakes, dude. He absolutely oh, my rakes. gosh. He's got a phenomenal eye. And he'll hit it in the third deck. So, I would love to have a leadoff hitter that can go first pitch of the game. Upper deck, right? One nothing. Thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> yes, I was there that game. Charlie Black and you were a savage for that. Six for six. Unbelievable. And I'm, I'm throwing Chuck Nasty some, some fire right now, so we better see you on the show later. You better, you better come for us, Chuck Nasty. I think you understand if that beard is on this show. That beard is glorious, and I'm going to tell you that is because of me. And if we get him out in here, he will tell you the story of how – That beard is for you. Because... Okay, well, this needs to happen now. I can win because Chuck Nasty might be on the show. I really need to know this. I really need to know that story. But, hey, I think you had a day there too, didn't you? Didn't you do a little something? I, got my, I think I got my first Rockies hit um, that yes. game. I, uh, I think I got to walk that game. <clears> and I <throat> my uh, first triple as a Rocky in the right center of that game. Like Brad Ziegler. Sorry, Brad. I love you, but I own you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was my Rockies home opener debut, and I, I think I hit a, a triple to right center. It was pretty fun. I, I got up at third, and I, I didn't realize. I just remembered when I like stood up at third that I was in mile high, and I was like, oh! <laughs> I couldn't oh. breathe. It was unbelievable. And I was like, this is a thing. Like, this is a real thing. It's real. They weren't kidding. It's a real thing. The altitude gets you. Wild. And this one I'll just throw out there because I think it's monumentous in the sport. Yeah. Um, but back in uh, 74, I think that's – I didn't write down the year, but 74, um, our boy Hank Aaron. Hank. Hammer and Hank. Hammer and Hank. Tied Babe Ruth all-time 714 dingers. Um, that obviously he later would be the, the home run king. We all know that. But it was a two-run homer off of Jack Billingham. I don't know who that is, but I just wanted to throw it in there. Riverfront Stadium? Yes. Yeah, I believe so, right? Didn't I write that? Where yeah, that? Cincinnati. Yes. Cincinnati. Look then I got that. the red stuff, and you know sometimes it goes – Look at that. Hammer and Hank hit it at Riverfront Stadium. Yes. That's impressive. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm super impressed, dude. Terrific power hitters. All time. Oh, 100%. I wish I could have actually seen it. Oh, I mean, you can go back and watch the video, and it's – You get the video, but – It's raw. No BGs. Big old bat. Like, throw it up there. I'm going to whack it. <laughs> he, was, he was the best, man. Hammer and hand. 100%. 100%. Hey, look, that's all we got for you today. I don't know if you got anything, but we'd love to hear what you all think. Yes, please send your DMs, your messages, whatever you have. Send them to us. We want to answer. We want to show you love. We want to give you shout-outs. And we want to bring you the best of beer and sports right here. So, 100%. Till next time. Till next time. On the couch. Hey! Bring it back. Y'all stay well. Love y'all. Bless.